Elon Musk predicts AGI. Feeling the AGI I'm to say it. This is essentially AGI. No, it's not. This is essentially dumb and has no real understanding of anything. That's one of the things Gary Marcus said in a recent talk that he gave. Let's listen to this brief clip where he asked an AI to draw a map of the US with the most iconic tourist attractions of each state. I don't see how you could call something AGI if it can't basically do a join in a database with an image. Like, it's just not AGI if you can't do that. Um, and here it's just dreadful. And the dreadfulness is partly driven by frequency effects, like overemphasis on frequency. It's putting Grand Canyon up because it's a popular tourist destination. So it's putting up, up everywhere. Um, same thing, it, it you know, writes, uh, well, I've seen a few differences, but it puts Rushmore in a bunch of places because it's popular. And it really doesn't know where the Statue of Liberty belongs. Like, which code, like, it doesn't actually understand geography. It doesn't really know that, you know, it should be a one-to-one -one thing where each state has its own thing. The text and image generation are apparently separate from each other. And just as Gary Marcus said, if this is the case, you cannot call this AGI. How to get to AGI then? Well, there's a theory postulated by basically anyone who works on LLMs that you just need to scale them up and feed them more and more data and at one point they will just turn into AGI. Here's what Gary says about that. I just wrote this on Twitter out of, out of absolute exasperation. In my entire career, I've never seen an experiment fail so many times at such great cost as the experiment on the scaling hypothesis that you could create AGI simply by adding more data and compute. It doesn't work. Can we try something different already? There was already this trendy thing called scale is all you need. You could even get it on a t-shirt saying AGI is coming, interpolating it from some lines. and. I guess a little bit after the conference, I wrote something saying, look, these things are not actually physical laws, like laws of the universe. They're just generalizations we've seen for a while. They don't necessarily um, hold. And so even at that conference three years ago, I, I showed the T-shirt and I said, come on, don't believe this for a minute. You know, there are actually deep structural problems here. Only scaling up LLMs won't work because there are deeper structural problems within the architecture of how LLMs are built. And Gary gave the talk he has given a few weeks ago, three years ago already. And since then, during a time where billions and billions have been put into the development of AGI and AI systems, nothing really has changed fundamentally. At least not when it comes to the development and progress toward AGI. Listen to Gary here. Large language models have become ubiquitous. They found a home in coding and brainstorming, not to mention writing student papers, which is, again, not a total plus, but if you're a high school student, you might love it. Um, and they became wildly known throughout the world, and people have made zillions of them. Every dot up here is like a $100 million experiment. It's, it's kind of science, right? Everybody is testing whether they admit to you or not the hypothesis that scaling is all you need to get to AGI. So every one of those dots is an experiment. There's like billions of dollars of research are graphed on, on here. And there's you know, $50 billion of chips pay, uh, purchased in the last 12 months or something like that. It's a very expensive experiment to look at the scaling uh, is all you need. So have they solved any of the problems that I was ranting about the last time I spoke before you three years ago? Well, you can guess where this is going. Um, in many ways, we're in the same damn place, but with much better graphics. I find it wild how many people still stand behind the scaling up theory and how many more billions are being put into it. In this next clip, Gary shows a graph of the development of AI models over the past years. And it obviously shows that development has slowed down significantly. Let's look at it. But there was a lot of progress. Uh, in the period leading up to GPT-4. But is it continuing? So this is where the curve should go. There's a little glitch with that that we can talk about. Um, but this is where the curve, roughly speaking, should go. But in reality, scaling has slowed. So here's the full curve of all the data. If you're a scientist, if you know Bayes' theorem, if you know how to aggregate data in whatever statistical technique you want, you can look at this. Each data point is a test of the hypothesis let's say that scaling would continue at the pace that it did from Palm Chinchilla to GPT-4. And it is obvious, you don't even need to run a statistic, but you could if you like, it is obvious that scaling has slowed, that we are not in fact still on that exponential regime. So yes, there are obvious diminishing returns in the development and scaling of LLMs, 
which is one of the biggest points that Gary makes. That's because there are certain issues that don't allow LLMs to scale or develop beyond a certain point. For example, hallucination problems. Let's listen to this next clip. I have been arguing that generative AI has been hitting a phase of diminishing returns. There is no cure for these hallucination errors where they just make stuff up. There is no cure for all of the boneheaded errors. Um, and I've argued that more data is probably not going to be enough. We have fundamentally our systems that predict things that are likely relative to how language works, but they're not actually understanding any of the concepts that they're using. Yes, they have an understanding of how language works. That's what they are trained on, language. But they do not understand the different concepts they are talking about. At least not more than language-wise, it makes sense to put the words in that order. But they don't really have an idea of how the world actually works. AI image generators are another good example for that. Yes, sure, the videos are good quality and they look cool, but you see all kinds of different stuff morphing into each other and all kinds of weird other things going on. And this shows once again that these models maybe can produce cool things, but they don't have an internal model or real understanding of how the world actually works, what physics are. So what could we actually do to get closer to AGI? In this next clip, Gary talks about different things that we would need in order to start getting there. Even having neurosymbolic AI, hybrid approach, is not a panacea. It's not the end of the story. Like People are looking for one magic bullet, the one algorithm to rule them all. And they love LLMs as a candidate for that. We're never going to find it. We're also going to need large-scale knowledge like Doug Lennett uh, liked to think about. Um, we need, for example, ways to represent knowledge about space, time, and causality. Like, what is now? Um, we still find, actually, that hybrid models that build in some knowledge in special domains still do much better. So I gave the example then of alpha fold, and I would give you the example now of alpha geometry that builds in some knowledge um, and is a hybrid system and, and does better. We need reasoning. We need also cognitive models. What is a cognitive model? Or Jan McCoon likes to call them world models, which is also a perfectly fine term for it. Um, that's a model of the world where you have entities in the world. You know what the relationships between those entities are. You should have that in a transparent way so you can look up in some database who is the current prime minister of Italy so that you can then draw a picture of the right person. We still need to have these models of the world systems still. The, the L, pure LLMs really don't. So we still need cognitive models, reasoning, background knowledge, and relations. Yes, these are all things that current LLMs do not have. And because of that, they will never turn into AGI. At least not only by themselves. But we'll get into that a bit more at the end of this video. For now, Gary Marcos talks a little bit more about the issues we currently face when it comes to AI development. In this next clip he mentions transparency as another major issue and the irony of a company being called OpenAI while it's so clearly not open. One important thing is we need transparency. We need a full counting, for example, of what data is used to train the current generation of models. We don't have that. We don't know them. We have a company called OpenAI that will not tell you what data they're using. Um, there's, the Mir Mirati went on, on television, or uh, the Wall Street Journal, I guess, interview, and said, we use publicly available and private sources. That's all she was willing to say, and that's what they say in their papers now. Publicly available, first of all, is a, is a weasel word to say some of it is stuff that it, we actually licensed, and some of it is stuff that is public domain for the taking, and some of it is not, but we were able to get it from some copy that's on Reddit, so we downloaded it, right? So it's a real weasel word. And then it doesn't actually tell you any of the specifics. And it matters because we can't fix it if we don't know what data goes in because these systems are so dependent on the data. It matters because we don't know what bias is there. We have no idea what data goes in or where it came from. And that's an issue, as he clearly explained. Another issue is that we mainly only have greedy corporate people and governments in the loop of AI development. But what we really need are independent scientists. 
That's something very obvious to understand if we look at the safety board of OpenAI. As some of you may know, most people of the board resigned and the board was dissolved essentially. And then OpenAI announced very graciously, oh look at us, we are going to restate our safety board. And what people are on the board now? Well, for example, Sam Altman and other people who have an interest in making a profit within OpenAI, which directly works against safety. Because safety is something that costs us something and doesn't generate a profit. So there's a huge conflict of interests and this new safety board is just a, a joke. You really don't need to be a genius to see that and see where this is going to go. But let's listen to what Gary says next. And we need scientists in the loop. Um, I get very upset every time I see a big kind of like press thing with a bunch of government leaders, presidents, prime ministers, and a bunch of AI leaders and no independent scientists who don't have skin in the game. And it happens over and over and over. And if that's all we get, then we get what's called regulatory capture. Some of you will know the term, some of you won't. Regulatory capture basically means the big companies write the rules, they keep out the smaller companies and they don't really care about the public. We are headed directly for that. That is what has happened uh, in the United States is the, the companies have basically lobbied their way out of any regulation. And if there is any, then it gets watered down, which is what happened in California yesterday. And we are seeing that more and more. In fact, that's something I talk about a lot on this channel. Big companies taking over and trying, sometimes through regulation, to push out smaller ones. This is exactly what the California AI bill tries to do. And it won't end well. Looking at all of these issues with scaling, transparency, and the companies not really delivering on the huge promises of AGI they already made, Gary sees another AI winter potentially coming soon. So you do predict a maybe short AI winter coming? I, Sorry. I think that there's a good chance of that. I don't, I mean, I can't fully predict the future, but I, I would say that if you look at the finances, OpenAI is a good example. They, they lost, uh, had an operating loss of $5 billion last year. You can't have an industry where most of the companies, except for NVIDIA, which is selling the shovels in the gold rush, are losing billions of dollars every year indefinitely. You know, I keep thinking about Wile E. Coyote, right? When he goes off a cliff and he doesn't notice it, and then he notices and then he falls. And while AI has great use cases, if these companies keep making losses year after year after year, this will not go anywhere. At least not if the costs stay high like this, with the promise of AGI on the horizon, if we just scale it up more and it just never comes. Recently, I broke down a paper of Dr. Van Goetzel where he talks about why LLMs will never turn into AGI. He makes the same points Gary is making, plus a few more. Be sure to check it out in the video right over there.